Mr. Opinionated coming to you live and direct with the one and only Blue Lady, Talitha Wallace, to talk a little bit about the Urban Bougie Collection, which you see right behind us. We're going to talk a little bit about the creative process and just what it takes to create something of this magnitude. What's up, Blue Lady? How you doing today? I am doing good. I'm always doing something. So the Urban Bougie line really came to life after... Um, was it Mother's Day? Mother's Day we had the church lady, the hat series, that did a wonderful job. But then I wanted to speak to the the younger ladies that are like more diva. And what you see now is a lot of women taking more pride in their ethnic root. You see more ladies with head wraps. You see them, but they might not have the traditional Kenta head wrap on um, for religious purposes. It's more for fashion. So when I looked in the fashion, I'm like, they got the head wraps. They got sunglasses, they still got their big earrings, they still wearing big purses. So I wanted to kind of draw them in. This population is between maybe 25, where they're becoming conscious, into like 35 to the 40s. So I was like, I love bright, bold colors. Our melanin sisters need to be reflected more in the artwork. So I said, okay, we're going to do some head wraps, some funky earrings, some funky sunglasses. And it really took off because I was like, man, people really love it. So I tried to make my collections small maybe like maybe 20 25 30 pieces and if i get a specific person that wants something very specific i do that so what i did too lately was i had a lady order one for um breast cancer awareness mm -hmm. that one really miss nina hall remember she's a poet she's right. a good person what those what you nina's good people she purchased that one and then i have another young lady she bought one for her mother so what i find with the inspiration for that one for the young lady that bought one for her mother was she knows that her mother sews so she would have her head wrap on at the sewing machine so I painted the lady at the sewing machine she got a head wrap on and when I went to go gather materials for the actual buns most of the urban bougies are 3D they have cloth on them or they might have wooden jewelry on them so for the cloth pieces when I saw that the cloth actually had sewing machines on it. Mm -hmm. It had sewing machines, it had needles, it had scissors, everything it had to do with crafting. So I think she really, the details is what I really like to put into my smaller pieces of artwork. As you can see, the art is not real big, it's not cascading, it's not wall. They're like, well, small coffee table mm -hmm. conversation types of pieces. So my inspiration comes from more of us. I want to see more of us reflected in the artwork that we have in our homes. Of course, I want it to be affordable and economical, but it is art. It is only made by me. There are no duplicates. You might say you see something similar, but none of this has been duplicated. There are no lithographs. There are no copies made. These are actually on stretch canvas from um, sizes 10 inches to 10 by 20 inches. Um, we have most of them in 12 to 24, 16 by 20. Nothing is really, really, really too large. Okay. That I, but I love to go, and now I'm learning to go and put my stuff out at more vending events because people are looking. There is an actual market. I didn't know it was a market. I just Absolutely. get inspired. I'm like, I want to paint. Boom, let's do it. But it's a real market. People are really looking for more conversational pieces in their new homes, in their apartments, when they have gatherings. They want to have stuff on the walls that people can talk about. Like, oh my goodness, that's nice. And then you get to talk about the artist and where you got it from. Okay, I'm glad you talked a little bit about the the materials that you used. Yes. What exactly does the creative process look like for the Blue Lady? Okay, so I pick, I try to pick a couple of things that really draw to me at the time. I like, you know, it might be kids, it might be grass, I might be watching TV and watch the Animal Planet and I see something and then I say, okay, I'm going to paint this. And some of it, I might get, I might draw it out on paper mm -hmm. first. I draft it. And then I say, okay, I like this. And I run it past my kids. My kids are my biggest critics. Okay. So I run it past them first. And then I might text somebody and be like, hey, you like this? And be like, ooh, this is going to be nice. And I be like, don't get too excited because the vision might change. But I am very visual. Most of my artwork is not abstract. It looks like something. It might be like a zebra. It might look like a lady with a hat. And so I like for my pieces to have as much detail as possible. I want you to be able to see the earring. I want you to be able to see the wrinkle in the hat. I want you to know that this is a hat, a floppy hat or 
Um, her glasses, I want her glasses to look like you can see the shine in the lenses. That's what I really want people to notice about my artwork. It's just not, it's, I see some art and it's a one dot. Right. And some people, people can read something into that one dot. I can't. Okay. So for my artwork, my creative process, I think about it, I sketch it, and then I go. I don't like to spend a lot of time on the artwork. If people order custom pieces, they might take me about 30 to 60 days to do, depending on the size. But for my most um, popular size, the 10 by 20s or the 12 by 24s, most of those, I could pump out a series in about a month if I don't have wow. anything else to do. But you know, in my world, I have 45 other things going on. But you know, I love art. Art, art is my first love. Mm -hmm. Before the hair, before teaching, before anything, Art was first since high school. Gotcha. You know. So, and finally, what would the blue lady say to up and coming artists? Because you know, Chicago is full of artists. Yes. It's full of creative people. Yes. Both of us are around them. Yes. We're in some of the same circles. Yes. But what advice and or encouragement could you give to up and coming artists? What I would inspire people to do is if you don't love it, don't do it for money. Because the stigmas with artistry and anything that has to do with teaching or being an artist is the star of an artist or the artist that didn't become popular until after they were dead so you really have to love what you do and do it for the love and not for the money you can't do it for the money you, you will not survive just doing it for the money because there is so much art in the world people can always get something for a, a lower, more economical price. So if you value your artwork at $500, the outside public might only value it at 10. So you have to do it because you love it and you want to get it out of your system. You want to paint it, you want to sculpt it, you want to do wood. Try different, try all types of mediums mm -hmm. as an artist. Find what you like to work with. I like to work with acrylic paint. Um, and 3D, I like to work with wood and things of that nature. I like to put wood on canvas. I like to put materials. I love the 3D effect when you touch it. When you go to most art galleries, they say, don't touch it. But I want you to touch it. I want you to feel the different textures in the paint. Okay. So for anybody that wants to be an artist, love it. If you don't love it, it won't do for you what you think it's going to do for you. Excellent information. Now, where can we find a blue lady? Say if somebody wanted some of the Urban Bougie collection or somebody wanted to commission you to do something, how could the viewers find you? The viewers can find me. My name is Talitha Wallace on Facebook. T-A-L-E-A-T-H-A. -A -A. Wallace spelled the traditional way. W-A-L-L-A-C-E. Or a quicker way to find me is hashtag blue lady, all one word. Um, I am on Facebook as Talitha Wallace. I'm on Instagram as the W Institute. All of it is under Talitha Wallace. If you Google Talitha Wallace, my name will come up. It might be a mugshot someone. Hey, everybody has a past. Uh, but for the most part, you can find me. I'm easily accessible. My phone number is 773-615-2601. My um, email address is twallace19 at Hotmail. You can find me on Cash App at Money Sign Blue Lady Productions. You can also pay me through PayPal at the blue lady underscore, no, the blue underscore lady events at yahoo.com. I am easily accessible, Cash App, PayPal, what's the other one? The Square App So There are no excuses. If you would like to put your deposits down, there is a deposit required for any art. It is half down before my hands touch the brush touch the canvas. One more time. Half down. Deposit before my hands touch the brush, touch the canvas. Thank you so much and I really want to encourage you to keep pushing. I love everything that you do. I follow you. You follow me. Capture Love, opinionated.com. Make sure that you follow Antoine. He is on the scene all the time. Support those who support you. Absolutely. So we want you to make sure you grab some of this cultural capital. Yes. Because that's what it is. Cultural capital. We want to walk in your house. We want to walk in your business. We want to walk wherever. And we want some cultural capital on your wall. Support those that support you. This is Opinionated.com signing off. See you later. Yay.